N.W.A. changed the rap industry forever. True rap fans know part of the story, but today we're breaking down the entire crazy situation behind the scenes. From starting a war with the cops, to kidnapping their own homies, this is how it all went down. Before N.W.A. became a crew, everyone was trying to make it in the industry through their own lanes. Dr. Dre was DJing and ran with a group called the World Class Wrecking Crew, who was cool with another crew called CIA. Ice Cube was repping CIA back then, and Easy E was trying to break out as a solo artist. But Easy wasn't just a rapper, he had his mind on the business side of things from the jump, and he linked up with a dude named Jerry Heller to create Ruthless Records. Heller was already a legend in the West Coast and had worked with superstars like Elton John. So when Easy met with Dr. Dre and decided to start NWA, having Heller manage them was a huge win. They brought in Ice Cube, DJ Yella, MC Ren, and Arabian Prince to complete the group. In 87, they put out a compilation album called NWA and the Posse, which picked up a little buzz. But one year later, they dropped straight out of Compton and changed everything. NWA weren't the only dudes making gangsta rap, but they're the ones who took it to a new level and had the whole country shook. Straight Outta Compton was like a bomb going off in the industry, and the track Fuck the Police put a huge target on their backs. Dre always knew that the track was dangerous. Before they released it, he had been going in and out of county jail over traffic violations, and he didn't want to catch a beating from the cops if they booked him again after the song came out. Eventually, he got on board to drop it, but nobody was expecting the feds to actually get involved. Rappers diss the police all the time these days, but back then, nobody heard anything like it. The track was making headlines everywhere, and the police actually refused to provide security for N.W.A. while they were on tour. Some local cops getting pressed over it is one thing, but the craziest part of the story is when the FBI jumped in and wrote a letter to Ruthless Records that said, advocating violence and assault is wrong, and we in the law enforcement community take exception to such action. The cops wanted to stay out of the spotlight, and even MTV banned the video for Straight Outta Compton. The cops in the industry didn't want N.W.A. to blow up, but all the drama around the music just made even more people want to check it out. And even though they had all kinds of people working against them, Stray Outta Compton ended up going double platinum. Nobody expected the album to pop off like it did, and they kept the momentum going when Easy dropped his debut solo project a month later and went double platinum again. Even though it was Easy's album, it was really just like any other NWA project. Dre and DJ Yella made all the beats, and Ice Cube helped write a lot of the lyrics. After the album came out, it seemed like nothing could stop him, but that didn't mean the police were done trying. NWA was selling out shows all over the country but there was one track that they were never supposed to perform. Fuck the Police had caused so much tension that the dudes on the business side didn't want to touch it, and their tour promoter told them they would have to pay a 25K fine if they played it during any of their sets. They went on tour and everything was going smoothly, but in Detroit, they decided to break the rule and that's when everything got crazy. In August 1989, NWA was in the middle of their set in Detroit. It's not clear what set them off, but for some reason, Dr. Dre and Q decided to play Fuck the Police in front of 20,000 fans. They got about 30 seconds into the track with everyone going crazy, and that's when shots started going off in the crowd and an army of undercover cops rushed the stage. NWA security had no idea what was happening. All they saw was a bunch of dudes trying to run up on the stage, so a brawl broke out while the rappers ran backstage away from the chaos. Eventually, the situation cooled off and the cops arrested them all backstage, but they didn't actually have anything to charge them with, so NWA was released immediately. At first, everyone thought there was a shooter in the audience, but it turns out that somebody just lit fireworks right when Fuck the Police started. And according to witnesses, the cops were the ones who set off the fireworks because they wanted a reason to rush the stage and stop the show. NWA had double platinum records, a massive fan base, and were making headlines all the time. They had gone from a bunch of underground artists to superstars overnight, but it fell apart even faster than it started. Even before Straight Outta Compton dropped, there were already some money issues going on behind the scenes. Arabian Prince didn't think the royalty statements were adding up, so he left the crew right before the album came out. Ice Cube had written most of the lyrics on Straight Outta Compton for everyone, plus he worked just as much on Easy Solo Project. Ruthless Records offered everyone in the crew a 75k check if they signed the contract, but Cube knew that he was worth way more. Plus, he wasn't even getting paid from the work he put in on Easy's album, and he thought Easy was taking advantage of everyone else. Cube left the group and dropped a solo tape, and that's when his old homies started airing him out. N.W.A. dropped the track Real Niggas, and the whole crew took shots at Cube with lines like, Now how the fuck you think a rap will last, with your ass saying shit that is said in the past? Yo, be original, your shit is sloppy, get off the dick, you motherfucking carbon copy. And Styles had kept them full of bull, cause the vocals were in nightclubs and not getting paid in full. They got the nerve to cuss, only reason niggas pick up your record is cause they thought it was us. They sent some more shots, then Cube clapped back with one of the most savage diss tracks in history. On No Vaseline, he aired out the whole crew plus Jerry Heller and rapped, 
I started off with too much cargo. Dropped four niggas, now I'm making all the dough. White man just ruling. The niggas with attitudes, who you fooling? The beef was already intense, but Q turned it up even more with the line, half pint bitch, fucking your homeboys, you little maggot. Easy E turn f you. With your manager fella, fucking MC Ren, Dr. Dre, and Yella. But if they were smart as me, Easy E would be hanging from a tree. Q believing NWA was massive news, and it led to Dre brutally beating a host named Dee Barnes. She was on a show called Pump It Up, which played a segment about NWA, but had footage of Ice Cube in there too. So when Dre ran into her at a party, he grabbed her by the hair and slammed her head against the wall. Then he followed her into a bathroom and kept beating her while she was laying on the ground. Dre aired out Cube for ditching the group, but in 91, he decided to leave too. Easy wasn't just gonna let him leave since he was still under contract. So Dre called in Suge Knight to handle the situation. It's still not clear exactly how everything went down, but rumors say that Suge and his goons kidnapped Jerry Heller, threatened Easy with baseball bats, and then wrote his mom's address down on a piece of paper to prove how serious they were. Easy eventually released Dre from his contract, but the beef wasn't over yet. Dre dropped his classic album, The Chronic, on the new Death Row record label. And on the track, Fuck With Dre Day, he said, the hoods you threw up with, niggas you grew up with, don't even respect your ass. That's why it's time for the doctor to check your ass, nigga. Used to be my homie, used to be my ace. Now I wanna slap the taste out your mouth, make it bow down to the rope. Easy clapped back with real motherfucking G's and rapped. But to me, you ain't nothing but a bitch ass nigga that ain't worth a food stamp. And at death row, I hear you getting treated like boot camp. Gotta follow your sergeant's directions or get your ass pumped with the Smith & Wesson. After the album Niggas for Life in 91, N.W.A. never released another project. All the beef had destroyed the crew, and even MC Ren stopped rocking with Easy. Easy never stopped sending shots at his old homies, but none of them expected what was coming next. In February 1995, Easy went to the doctor over a low cough. It didn't seem like a big deal at all, which is why he shocked the entire world when he announced two weeks later that he had AIDS. The illness took him down so fast that nobody even knew how to react. And in March 1995, he tragically passed away at just 30 years old. It was a massive loss for the rap game, but there was one piece of good news that came from the situation. While he was in the hospital, Easy managed to squash the beef with all of his old homies in NWA before it was too late. Dre and Ice Cube eventually settled their issues too and went on to become legends in the game. And even though they went down different lanes, they'll always be known for taking gangster rap to the mainstream and opening the doors for a whole new wave of artists. Without N.W.A., there's no telling what the rap game would look like now. They were constantly fighting the cops, media, and each other. But at the end of the day, their legacy in the game made it all worth it.